Hello everyone, my name is Aram Hovanisyan and my Capstone project is uh, optimization of copper upward continuous casting technology. Uh, my supervisor is Dr. Hracha Kocharyan and moving on uh, to the importance of copper. Uh, so copper is used in various industries starting from electrical power transmission lines, microelectronics, heating and cooling systems, as, as well as hydraulic systems and corrosive environments. The motivation of this paper was maximization of production output of copper wire for NSLC, which uh, provided with their financial uh, support and their machinery for this project. And also as Armenia has a lot of copper mines which are not uh, processing uh, the copper very effectively, this project may help the processing in Armenia for copper material. So copper continuous casting technology features two different uh, technologies. One is the downward casting technology, while the other one is the upward casting technology, which we actually used for the project. While the similarities between these projects are very, uh, a lot of them, uh, there are severe differences between them. For example, downward casting technology uses secondary cooling and uh, primary cooling and secondary cooling, while upward casting technology uses only uh, primary cooling. Also, downward casting technology is widely used for casting large diameter uh, uh, metal billets, while uh, upward casting technology is only used for small diameter rods and tubes. Uh, one uh, significant process which I would like to discuss is wire drawing process, which involves reducing uh, copper rods from initial diameter of 8 millimeters to 1.78 millimeters or down to 0 0.3 millimeters. This is one of the most significant reasons why we need optimization of the copper production process because uh, poor copper rod quality may affect the wire drawing process and the f further processing may be impossible. So here you can see the machinery used for the uh, experimental part of this uh, uh, research. Uh, this is the casting machine and you can see the heat exchanger assembly here which features a steel uh, heat exchanger, graphite mold which I used and the insulating cup. Mm -hmm. Additionally, we used several other uh, components which I would like to mention. We also used water chiller unit for cooling down the machine because the machine features an induction, electromagnetic induction heating system and it requires cooling and as well uh, also heat exchanger uh, consumes the heat from the copper melt by the wa uh, cooled water. We also used silicon carbide uh, crucibles, uh, graphite mold for 8 millimeter copper rod and we also used silicon carbide thermocouple as uh, conventional thermocouples do not withstand temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius and we use grapha graphite powder which is mainly used for copper melt degazing and uh, prevention of copper oxidation. So here, are the out here is the outline of the uh, process. So we start with the induction heating, then we go on with the gazing process using the copper pow uh, powder, then goes the copper casting and rod winding. So moving on to the uh, casting parameters that we used for this experiment, there are various uh, parameters that, that affect this process, such as the superheat modulus of uh, copper melt, the temperature of cooling water, water flow rate, and uh, initial uh, copper used for casting, and so on. But we will discuss only the casting parameters which refer to the withdrawal unit, unit as this is the most significant part in this process. It consists of the casting speed, which is the linear speed of casting the uh, rod, the pull distance, which is the step of a single cycle uh, completed by the machine, and the pause time is the difference between two cycles. <coughs> We, uh, for accurate results, we tried to make the cast samples as many as possible. And for this reason, we made 10 casts. And as you can see here, the pull distance and interval time were maintained constant for the first four samples, while the casting speed was uh, changed 
for them. And similar picture can be noticed from, uh, for the cast from 5 to 10. So uh, moving on to the results. Uh, when we cast the copper rods without any, uh, uh, we noticed that the color of the copper rods differed according to their parameters. And I brought several copper rods to uh, make that more visual. As you can see here, I brought the cast number one, five, and seven, and the differences between these rods are significant. You can notice that there is a difference in their oxide layer. Mm -hmm. One is thicker, and the other one are not so significant. So the other thing that we noticed, the cast number eight failed because of insignif insufficient cooling of the inside the mold, because the interval time that we set of 0 0.1 second was insufficient for the copper to uh, solidify. We used uh, two methods for examining the copper specimen. The first one was crystallography, and the second method was three-point bending, a mechanical test to uh, determine the Young's modulus. X-ray diffraction uh, test uh, was mainly uh, to clarify, the, uh, to verify the FCC structure of copper lattice. And the other uh, goal was to find the average crystallite size for each specimen separately. We can see here the X-ray diffraction patterns. And as you can see here, we have five distinct peaks, uh, each corresponding to FCC structure of copper lattice. Additionally, we can't find any other peaks corresponding to any impurities or copper oxides inside the copper. This means that the copper casts uh, were uh, solidified very, uh, very good. So the next step was uh, er er estimating the crystallite size by Scherer's equation. And the results were plotted according to uh, different uh, changing parameters. As you can see here, there is a slight change in the crystallite size, a negative correlation for the casting speed. While for the pool distance and the interval time, make, make, we can see that the correlation is mostly positive. But due to a uh, small amount of uh, specimen, further investigations are required here. The next step was the mechanical test setup. As I mentioned earlier, we made a three-point bending test because we uh, lacked uh, uh, machinery to uh, complete a tensile testing. So we used a Young's modulus uh, formula for three-point bending. And the results were again plotted to find the correlation between the casting parameters and the uh, Young's modulus. Here we can see that Young's modulus versus casting speed is mostly linear. So increasing casting speed also results in Young's modulus increase, which is not very uh, good for wire drawing process. Similar picture is for the pool distance, while uh, the difference is that the function is mostly logarithmic. Here we can see that there is a significant jump between the first and the second points, and then we reach a certain plateau, after which uh, the parameters do not, uh, the Young's modulus do not change at all. Similarly, for interval time, we get the exponential decrease for all the specimens tested. Here you can see the cast number eight, which also failed, and it was the most um, hard material that we used. And then we go to an exponential decay and reach a plateau again, as the other in, in, the, in the other case. For each of the earlier mentioned graphs, we describe the equation of Young's modulus using these functions, and these functions uh, are our main. Uh, objective functions that are going to be used for the constrained optimization later on. Here you can see the daily output equation of the casting machine which we derived. It depends on the pool distance, uh, interval time, and casting speed. Here V stands for uh, volume of cast copper rod per, per shift, working shift. And uh, here you can see our objective functions and constraints for the uh, constrained optimization problem. Uh, the first one is the reciprocal of our uh, 
production output equation, while uh, F2, F3, and F4 correspond to each of the casting parameter equations that we derived earlier. Here are uh, constraints which we used where uh, corresponding to the range of the values that we changed for each of the parameters. Here is the <coughs> interval time. As you can see, the minimum point is 0 0.1 seconds. But as we know that as 0 0.1 uh, parameter failed to uh, work, we changed the initial uh, constraints to 0 0.3 seconds, which is more viable for uh, physical testing. And also, we, we maintain the Young's modulus below 270 megapascals, which is the appropriate value for wire drawing process to uh, take place. So we also uh, derived the Pareto front for the constraint optimization. And the results that we plotted using MATLAB software were as follows. The final casting parameters that would uh, result in maximum output while maintaining Young's modulus under 270 megapascals are pull distance of 24 millimeters, interval time of 0 0.35 seconds, and <coughs> speed of 28.5 millimeters per second. This will result in estimated daily output of uh, 224 kilograms of copper rod daily with a single casting head. But since the machine uh, features two casting <coughs> heads, we can double the output, and our estimated uh, daily output will be around 450 kilograms. So these results were sent to the production manager for investigation and for uh, more physical uh, results to be uh, shown. And it is uh, considered as a my future work to uh, make sure that these parameters will help the wire drawing process to uh, be successful. Here are my acknowledgments. I would like to thank my uh, supervisor, Dr. Hrachak Kocharyan. His uh, expertise in such fields such as uh, material science and thermodynamics were very su sufficient for me to complete this project. I would like to express my sincere uh, thanks to the NSLLC for providing their machinery and uh, financing me in this project, as well as uh, I would thank my friends Bartan Hayrapetian and Chemical Physics Institute, which helped me with the XRD result te test. And I would also like to have thank Arman Asadrian, who helped me with mechanical uh, specimen preparation. And here are my references. Thank you. Starting this project, the company with whom you collaborated for making, who provided the machinery and everything, what were the parameters that they used before? I mean, I, I guess they well, have, it's a factory that operates and they have some parameters. Yes, uh, actually, I'm working in this factory, and this factory uh, assigned me to find suitable uh, casting machinery for them, and I found it, I imported the machinery made the physical setup, the electrical circuitry, and after which I started working on the optimization of the production. So this was my... So this is first time basically they are running... Yes, the yes, uh, yes. <laughs> so because of that, perhaps you should think, you and your colleagues, I mean the collaborators, should think about getting legal protection, which is... If this really works in a practical way, it could have some really good results. Which gets me to my <laughs> next question, actually. Um, do you have any rough estimate on how much it would cost to produce a unit weight or a unit volume of, of the product? Well, uh, the main goal was not to uh, find the unit uh, price, but rather maximizing the output because these uh, copper rods which are used uh, in cable manufacturing they are going through a lot of processes uh, almost like six processes to be processed further and it's not very uh, significant to calculate the price of the product to be processed yeah, well, when you produce the same product faster that reduces the unit price yes it uh, reduces uh, unit price uh, 
I mean, having a rough number would have been nice just to, to see who, where, where's the range of well, this machine is uh, supposed to work 24-7, so uh, it's the only way to maximize the output, I mean, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you.